Here's to another episode of Uninterrupted the Shop, full of memorable and very unpredictable moments. Cheers, Cheers. to that. I know I'm not a model, but it could be worse. <laughs> With your Beyonce fan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you ever see Beyonce? Like, she really does just, like, go on stage. She just has fans like this, and she just yeah. moves them. I don't want Beyonce to be touching some box fan during her show. <laughs> you would think it would be more high tech than that. I don't want to die for them to miss me. I see the things that they wishing on me. Hope I got some brothers that outlive me. They gon' tell the story was different with me. God's plan. God's plan. I can't do this on my own. Hey, no. I've been me since Scarlet Road. Hey, God's plan. God's plan. So your biggest fear is rats, your biggest fear is snakes. Every second I'm on an airplane, you feel the biggest. The, oh, that's scary. Fear. To this day, still. To this day. So Every time it goes, and I fly five times a week. Every time it goes up and you hear the little <laughs> cracking on the, <laughs> any little thing, yeah. bro. I don't like flying, it's not you natural. You don't like flying either, though? No. And every time I'm on, right. I'm on with a celebrity, right? And so I can see the headline. And then I, <laughs> I used to <laughs> joke with my buddy. Talk about this with him. He and I obviously flown a trillion times together. It was bumpy, and PR said all I could think about was, the headline's gonna read LeBron James and four guys go out. <laughs> my mom, my mom, won't, even know, my mom won't even know it was me. Yeah. Travel is the worst, and I'm about to go on tour, so I'm like, this How many dates really are you doing? sucks a year, Joe. <laughs> um, I'm doing like 50 dates. Post Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle having to basically fight on stage as a comedian, are you nervous at all? Like, are comedians well, in danger so now? Funny. I know. I keep laughing thinking about that. Like, like, is it a scary time to be a comic? I'm like, no, it's a scary time for women and black people. Um, and, but comedians, I think, are going to be OK. I mean, truly. I just got a bunch of shit because. Well, Amy, give, yeah. give the context. So OK. We'll the so um, myself and Wanda Sykes, Regina Hall, we, we hosted the Oscars. And you know, Chris is like, Chris Rock's like my brother. He's like one of my best friends. You know, also how, like how we've all loved Will Smith for so long to see that he's in that much pain, to see all that rage. Like it was, it was, so anyway, people were really mad at me, really mad at Wanda um, for saying that, that we were traumatized by that. You know, kind of like, how dare you? And I'm like, look, I get it. White women are the worst. I hate myself. Trust me, like <laughs> uh, forever, undefeated the worst. But, yeah. um, but then when this Buffalo shooting just happened, like, our movie, these two girls got killed in Lafayette, Louisiana, going to see Trainwreck. And ever since that happened, I have, you know, done whatever I can to help and use my voice to try to help with gun violence. And Buffalo was no different, but people started posting, like, oh, Amy, you were traumatized about that. What about this? Your voice isn't as loud as it was on this. And, and, then, and I, like, have worked really hard to educate myself and do my best to be a good ally and like accomplice in this white supremacy that we live in. It's always, it's the little girl unfortunately got murdered in the Bronx and my DMs are like flooded, like, where you at? We, like they, they start thinking celebrities are almost like gods, like we can stop the yeah. crime. That's we, an interesting point. Like, does every celebrity have to speak on everything? You can't, it's, Nobody has think? to speak on anything. I think sometimes mm. the problem is that too many people speak on too many things. Mm. I, look. Freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want, but do you have to? I do think when things like Buffalo happen, uh, when things like, you know, Ferguson or Baltimore or Will Smith and Chris Rock, that people should have the same energy for white supremacy, for racism as they have for a black man slapping another black man. Like, you should have the same energy for that. So I think in a way, Amy, uh, for you, you should take that as a badge of honor because people see you as a voice who should be speaking up for those yeah. things. And I think it's something I feel people... you and I appreciate that. And I didn't mean to cut you off because I want to... No, that's all right. Go on. Go I on. did. I had spoken up about it. Yeah. I, I, you know, so it wasn't even... It wasn't founded. What you so say matters. Even though it's like... And that is... That's a compliment. Yeah. 
what people people care about your opinion. Thank you. And that is a compliment. I know it's tough. Yeah. Right. Say what you have to say and move on, and then you I know. know you can only do I, I, I want to ask you, Bron, what's your point of view on when you should speak up with your massive uh, platform and when you shouldn't? I mean, some of the things is definitely right now. You know, if, if things happen and I feel like it, it hit home to me, and I feel it in my gut and my heart, like if it's something that happens in a black community, no matter if it's in my hometown of Akron or Los Angeles or Shreveport, Louisiana, or whatever the case may be, you know, I'll speak about it right away. But there's also matters that I'm not very educated on and things that don't hit home for me. You know, like Don said, some things you don't, you shouldn't feel obligated to speak about everything. But I think when it's, when it, when it feels like, when it feels heavy in your heart and it's in your gut, then I think that's when you definitely, you get the best response and the best narrative out there. But it's also the, the media. You know it's also, saying? it's like you don't control what yeah. they use as the pull quote. Everybody, it's all about, and what fuels people is hate. The media. <laughs> <laughs> and I do mean you. That's bad. What well, she meant was Don. No, no. But I, do, I have to say, though, I do admire that you're willing to take the heat. And if you feel that you have not been educated about something, it's something that you run, you're, were wrong about, then you apologize, or you say, I didn't know. And that's what we all should be yeah. able to do. We sh it, there should be grace in conversations. We have a voice, and we should be able to, to exercise that voice, and there should be some leeway with that, right? Instead of Crazy. Like yelling at us, maybe the question from people should be is, why did you say that? What is your perspective I behind And we're living in a time where making a mistake and, and, and being able to come back from that, not being perfect, they don't, they don't allow everyone to do it anymore. You've worked 30, 40, 50 years trying to build something, build for you, build for your family, build for your community, build for your culture. And you, you are afraid at times to say things because the people that's not working hard, the people that's not educated, are the ones that's fucking canceling people. That's the thing, people are afraid. Like, like I've, made, I've taken so many swings trying to be helpful and gotten it wrong. And I'm gonna just keep doing that because being afraid of doing the wrong thing is gonna just keep us right where we are. As a comedian, I ask you this too, Joe. Like, do you guys think you have an obligation to tell the world about yourselves? Like, I think there's a moment for that. I think it's really cool for any artist to evolve in, in, in to, and let themselves be vulnerable at times and to pull the curtain back. I think if you're doing the same thing, you know, for years, even if you're like the greatest joke writer, um, it's like, if you don't at a certain point let yourself be a little vulnerable, I I'm not interested in continuing to watch your stuff. I'm gonna tell you the truth. If we grab 10 kids right now, it wouldn't be hard, right on this corner, right outside. And we got them to rap, they would say, I'm going to my mansion, I got my chains, I got <laughs> and they, yeah. their sneakers got holes in them. Yeah. So they all lying. Aspirational. There's truth in there, Aspirational. there's creativity. Yeah. You know how many times I, I lie? But, you know, but when you write... I get in the studio, sometimes I'm happy. I write some happy stuff. Sometimes I get in there and I hate the world and I write some hateful shit. It, but do but you I... feel the obligation to tell us about your yourself? Self. So like if you listen to Kendrick's new album or when Jay-Z made 444. That's raw. Kendrick, he, felt, he felt he was very raw. vulnerable at the yeah, time too. So, you know, it, but, and also it, it probably just hit home for him at, at that time. And a lot of artists and people that do, like when it, when it feels real to you, you know, I feel like a lot of, R&B singers, when they when they are at their most vulnerable stages, when they, when they get their best album, I think it's I think it's, I think it's people, it's thing. artists, it's athletes, it's everybody who really has a platform. I think, and even as a journalist, I would not. I feel like you you have to be vulnerable because you have to be real. Um, I've and, seen you be so vulnerable, so moving, and that's you know, rare. Be, because, and it's it's scary, but yeah. then that's the only. No, way no, that no, no. It's great. That's why we but love you, Don. Doesn't that love go you, against Don. like you. the co You guys are supposed to be up there and like, not break down, not show emotion. And, it, but well, no, the, no. Who says that? Well, traditionally, right? We, we don't been... live in a Walter Cronkite society anymore, <laughs> right? This is that. not like you don't have three channels and then you know a couple major newspapers around the country. We live in a different world right now, and. There didn't used to be people who look like me, yep. right? You have a gay black man who is the only, I am the only black person in primetime on cable, right? So if I don't say it, if I'm not vulnerable, if I don't speak for my people and for my perspective, mm -hmm. then who am I? Yeah. Why am I there? Yeah, I just want to say something. This is totally off topic, but you were talking about like, you know, rappers and the aspirational sort of whatever. And I was thinking that I think it's the opposite for women, like, and for female <laughs> comics. It's like, 
Well, okay, I grew up loving Lil' Kim, and it was like, my pussy's the best and everything. But, <laughs> and so I have a little bit of that, you know? <laughs> but like, Mobs Mabley, or me, Chelsea Handler, whatever, we're up there being like, I'm a drunk, I'm a fat whore, like, you know, whatever. And I think women, like, you, you, you take yourself down, mm. you know, and yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. go the other way with it so that, to be accepted. But don't you think, I think there are women who are breaking the mold and not doing that. I don't think Tiff. Haddish does that. Tiff is like, you, if you've seen her lately, she's like, this is what su success looks like. Yes. This is not a costume. This is couture. But how is that right. going for her? I'm really asking this. I'm really asking this. I love Tiff. I don't know. I, mean, I love I Tiff too. I I, she's incredible. She's had a huge meteoric rise. Um, I'm wondering if, if people are going to get pissed at her. I'm wondering. Because, because, because they think she's bragging. I, I'm noticing well, it. Well, I'm, and I'm noticing. Well, well, you know, well, I, well, yeah. well, 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 well. I think we Joe come, has something to say. When you come from <laughs> us, when you come from us, you come from nothing, right? Yeah. And so, and I know she well, I'm telling me. you about Fat Joe. Yeah. Fat Joe came from nothing, and I don't give a fuck. I want to live as good as I can be. I give back as much as I can. I open up businesses in the community. I got a school in my store. I do everything I can, right? But I'm going to throw that Louis Vuitton on like a motherfucker. Ooh. Ooh. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. And I don't care who it gets a... mad. Mm. I don't care who gets mad. But that's well, it's different for entertainers. Like for I can't, you know, be sporting Louis Vuitton on and then talking about no, people are hurting with the gas prices. We see you on the boat in the Hampton and all that. Don't <laughs> you, Whoa, you think you're on the low? Yeah. You think <laughs> you're on the low? Come on, Don. Don, man, they pulling up to your house taking yeah. pictures and shit. Like, <laughs> oh my God. you're not on the low, Don. Uh, but let me, to your point, you're right about that. I, I've never even thought about that because if you look at the queens of comedy, I, yeah. I never thought of that. They're made, making fun of like Joan Rivers. Oh my boobs! Oh, right. I'm getting my face yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's making all, fun of themselves. It, I mean, yeah, for the most part the most successful female comics, it's it's pretty self-deprecating. Yeah. Do you test yourself? Because like like Rock says, Always he was, like, he he was worried about sure. people with phones, you get canceled. Oh, I saw Rock had a test uh, in New York. Yeah. In the cellar. In the, in the cellar. cellar. He popped Ooh. in. He popped you, in. You, you were there to see We were there to see That people are going to film me? That people are going to film you or just cancel you for testing stuff that... I just tested, I just tried some shit and I got in so much trouble. What'd you get in trouble for, Amy? No, no, no. What'd you get in trouble, trouble for? We want to hear this. Okay, okay, okay. So this one, this one my lawyer said not to say. Okay? Ah! <laughs> I was going to go with the Oscar, like, you know, French films. Like, if you love everything French, you're a Francophile. But if you're James Franco, you're a pedophile. <laughs> but I, but he's not a pedophile, okay? What, where's my camera? He's not a pedophile, he's great. He just loves what I call old souls. <laughs> just like a 22-year-old pussy with just the oldest soul you've ever... <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> my God. Joe, that's good. Why do you edit yourself like that? Yeah, are you Why afraid you... of backlash? Yes. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> Yes. But you know, whatever it comes and goes. And, but should you be? And you know be? what? I don't hurt. Like, huh? Should you be afraid? A backlash. Well, okay. Me talk. Me openly saying, even not even being mean about Trump, but just during 2016, I'm on stage and I just wanted to ask someone in the crowd, just can someone explain to me, um, why you like why you would vote for him? You know, just asking the question. 200 people get up and leave. This is that an arena in Tampa and 15,000 people stayed, sorry. But anyway, going forward from there, like that did hurt my my bank account. Like like alienating oh, wow. that, man, yeah, I, I mean, be, but it I feels be good to be free. I must be broke as fuck, man. <laughs> I mean, so I got some affluent friends. They voted for Trump just for taxes. We did my daughter's sweet 16. So everybody's here together, this big melting pot. This young lady, she works for the White House. Right, so I invite her and her husband. And then I got a young lady, diehard Republican, but she's our family for 15, 20 years. So I introduced them, and I said, this woman works in the White House. Oh, you know, Latina power, you know, whatever. So we get up to take a picture, and my girl, who's a Republican, she was like, I'm not getting in that fucking picture. That makes sense. And she's gonna face backlash, though, from her people her for being group. in the picture with a liberal. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. That's, That's a, a real uh, thing. Listen, you know how we all go to things, and everybody's there, right? Everybody's yeah. at the thing, right? And this is 
probably shouldn't tell this story, but I will. Yes, Come thank you. Was, oh, we we need that. Was a Hollywood, Yo, John, we need there was a Hollywood that. reporter party, right? Um, New York Power List. And this is before the Harvey Weinstein thing. Yeah. And then uh, I'm, I'm there, to, uh. whatever, standing there talking to people. There was a guy from MSNBC, and there was Sean Hannity's there. Everybody's there. And um, the, the photographer just says, hey, can I get a picture with you guys? And I said, sure. Oh. And he's like, yeah, I'll take a picture with you and Hannity. And, I mean, it was me Him, and, Harry it was, and Hannity. One was me and Hannity. One was me and Harvey, Harvey. Weinstein, whatever. Woo! I don't know him. This was before the Cosby. controversy. They just asked me to take a picture. And now that picture comes up. Don Lemon is friends with him. I don't know him from Adam. Yeah. Wow. I was oh, just yeah, at the same event problem. with him, and I took a picture. Wow. The same thing with Sean Hannity. He'll get on television and talk crap about me. We're at an event. He's like, hey, how are you? Let's go out and have a steak, blah, blah, blah. Let's get in the picture. Ah. And he's talking about how much he hates the liberals, but he's, like, smiling in my face at an industry party. And how do you deal with that? I don't. Cordial. I don't. I just, I, I cordial, like, okay, good to see you, whatever, fine. But yeah. I don't get on television. I don't talk about him. I don't reciprocate. Mm -hmm. I don't give people the energy. You don't give them at all. your time. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, it's not worth my time. It's like, I see you. I know who you are. You know, you say one thing on television, and then you're a different person in person. I've had reporters and people be on TV talk shit about me, and then at All-Star Weekend, they think it's like the greatest time in the weekend. Everybody's funny, funny. Can you take a picture with me and my kids? And, uh, Would you take a picture with them? No. Yeah. Yeah, but they're I mean, like, you're the, you're it. You're God to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, not that that gives them a right, but but I, I try to think of this sometimes to make myself feel better because I get so much hate from the internet. I go, well, who gets the most hate? The people at the top, top, oh, top sure. of everything. But this is a question for both of you guys. I don't think that I'm beyond reproach or criticism. Like, I welcome, like, Dave, criticize me. I, I love it. If Sometimes people deserve criticism, so I don't... For I'm, sure. If I think it's unwarranted, so you were talking about reporters that talk shit about it. There's a difference between talking shit and being critical of something. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't my mind. job. I don't mind if you're critical of, of my game and what I do. If you're critical of how I play the game or whatever the case may be or the game I had, you, you get a, some of these reporters on television that they kind of take it a little bit too personal. Mm -hmm. You know, where now they're involving... My son's name. Yeah, that's not. Cool. You know, that's, and now you're getting a little bit too far. That's not. Cool. You take it. So that's where that's when I get to the the intent. I'm, yeah, behind I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, and I'm petty too. It's one thing to talk about you, but when you talk about somebody's family, yeah. now I'm doing the whole 360. Oscar's Will Smith, his wife hit him with the. Mm. Mm-hmm. That man was put on that spot. She gave him them eyes and was like, go handle your business, bro. I, I know how to tame What if you girl. hit her back with this, though? I got you. I got it. Listen, not, my wife not My now. wife likes the tough fat Joe. She That's don't she like the silk with? shirt fat Joe. That's what she fell in <laughs> love so with. Sure. When I wear a pair of Tim's, she loves yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Joe, let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah. Is the tough fat Joe, did you tuck him away? Is he gone? He's so suppressed, man. <laughs> This guy's so suppressed because we trying to do good for the people. Yeah. So even the tough fat Joe always had a good heart and always cared about his people. So, so I want to ask you about, because you're making an incredible transition, right? You're a rapper, but you're not really a rapper anymore. You're a personality. You got the podcast. Did you do that consciously or did it just happen? To I you? always did it, but when COVID happened, I was scared of dying. You got mm, me through I some would, of the pandemic, I have to say. You would go live. I didn't even know she was watching. I would. I he would go see? live. So go ahead. So I'm me. telling you the truth. I was scared I was going to die, pre-diabetic. And so one day my daughter said, you should go live. My daughter's my executive producer of my show. How old she, is she? She's the one that told She's 16 she's now, but it started at 14. And she was like, Dad, you need to go live. I didn't know what the hell live was. I went on, it was ringing off. Every star you could think of just kept saying, click me in, Joe, click me in, Joe. And everybody stuck home. That was me. And it just got me through the fear. And I knew my people was hurting. I knew they needed the information. Can I put this into context for everyone? Because you, as, as the journalist. The yes, man, please. Um, what you said, what you became is what many people became. You became a cultural critic. It wasn't just COVID, it was George Floyd. It was a protest that were happening around the country. It was people of color and poor people were dying and they, were, they had a closer contact with COVID. So we had all of these things going on. So it forced you to become a critic of the culture. And in many ways, you were kind of doing what I do, right? Absolutely, what I do. Yeah. You became the voice of the people. Ron, how much do you think about transitioning now? Oh, yeah. Year 20 coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
What do you want to do, by the way? Well, when I'm Would done. you go on TV? Would you be on? A I don't know. I'll be watching that stuff a little bit. Like when uh, Tom Brady signed up for TV, were you like, oh, maybe that's? Yeah, good. when I seen how much he signed for, <laughs> goddamn right, I did. Damn, they get would it. Would you up. do it? Yeah, I would. I really? would. Yeah, for sure. I think you should be a movie star. You know. I mean, one, I, I, my knowledge of the sport, and um, <laughs> and being able to have my insight on the sport and still be around the game. I, I want to stay around the game for sure, forever. But like when you're doing this shit on Twitter during the playoffs, you know people are gonna talk about what LeBron said. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Why do you, why do you choose to do that, brother? What did he say? Um, he doesn't say anything. He just I've been with him, sitting next to him, watching a game. Yeah. He'll tweet something, and then it'll show up on TV. <laughs> yeah, like right, away, like right away, like right away. Can I just real quick test you on that? How many fouls before you have to get out of the game? <laughs> before you. Before it, you foul you're out. And you can't come oh, back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, six in our sport. Ah, yeah. okay. Six in our sport, yeah. The question was, why do you do it? He asked, didn't you say, why do you do it? Why do I do it? I feel like it's, uh... Because you know people are going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, it. for sure. And I, and I won't, and I, one, I, I'm letting people know I'm still engaged. He's a fan. I'm, I'm a He's fan engaged. of the game. I'm engaged in the game, and I care about our sport. And I, I know everything about our sport. Like, literally, like, I know everything that goes on with our sport, and I want to continue to help our sport grow. But you think about that now. Yeah, like yeah. What you do. yeah, I think what about post career. Do? I want to own a team. Buy a team? Yeah, I want to buy a team. That's it. There for you sure. Go. There you go. Buying a right. team and then talking is a little tricky. Uh, if you own the team and like. Yeah, I would much rather own a team before I talk. I want, yeah, I want a team in Vegas. Good for you. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> I want a team in Vegas. Why can't you have a voice and also be an owner? Oprah well, did yeah. it. Well, no, Oprah does it. Because because Tyler does it. Because he could do it. Because Don. Yeah, they don't allow it. Yeah. Guys get fined for that now. Yeah. What is it? It's called uh, tampering. It's called tampering. Yeah. You can't. You actually yeah. can't do it. Even in a post, it would be like you holding office and speaking about it on your show. Let me. I know some people who do that. <laughs> <laughs> who have been kicked off Twitter for doing that. But I'm just saying. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you one question. One question, right? <laughs> just just one random question because we talked about basketball, right? Luca. He does the same move every single time. Can no one study how to stop this move? It's like when in video games, like a cheese mode. You, you know, they just cheese him. Like, they, they just do the same shit. I'm like... But, Bron, what, what makes Luca special? I know you recently said he was your favorite player. His size? He's gigantic. I mean, he's gigantic. He's 6'8", six, 6'8", eight, six, eight point guard. He's 225 pounds. Jeez. He has the ball on the string. And but more importantly, his his vision. That's why I love his, his vision. He he can control a game. He don't he doesn't even have to shoot. He will literally he'll walk the ball up the court ten straight times and get to his spot every single time. Mm -hmm. Just because of his pace. He knows when he comes off a pick and roll, if they're hard showing or if they hedging or if they drop in the pick and roll, he know I could turn the corner because I got this shoulder and I know the third line of defense, when I get there, if I just slow down. Just slow down, use my pivots, you know, not even jump, just sh the Euro one, two, this guy's flying by. He's flying by every time. It's, it's the mind. What's it been like for you being home and out of the playoffs this year? Which is something you're Listen, not Listen, man, I took my I took my wife to her dream destination to the Maldives right after the season. You know, she never thought I would, she never thought I would go. Every time she asked me about it, I'm like, I'm not, it's too fucking long. Too far. It's too far. I just got done playing in June. I only got a month and a half to relax before I got to get going. So when I told her we was going, she still didn't believe me. <laughs> she didn't believe me until we pulled up to the plane and she was like, oh shit, you're serious. I was literally in the Maldives waking up at three o'clock in the morning watching the playoff games. Like every Time single yeah. game yeah. at three o'clock in the morning, waking up, watching the games. Like I can't, as much as I don't want to watch it, cause it's like, it. it it burns in my stomach to not be a part of these games because this is the best time to play basketball. Like the fan in me can't not, I, I just love, of I love the, Of the teams love playing, which one would you want to play for? Oh my God. <laughs> Mavs is, Mavs trying to fuck me over right here. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I had a lot to let drink me, Let me, let me help you out. The team I play uh, for. The I team I would love to play for is not in the playoffs, which is the Lakers. Yeah. But if it was one team that I know I could make an immediate impact in the postseason, and we could be very special. It'd, yeah, it'd, be, it'd either be Miami or Golden State, for sure.
And I and I like the way Draymond talked to guys too. Like I, I don't mind. Yeah, I like you being his enemy. I would love enemy. getting into a pissing match Yo, with Draymond. Bond, like I would. In the game. Yeah, I, like I would love that. Because it's iron sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love that. Like that type of shit. Like I love when somebody cuss me the fuck out. Like if I'm not doing my. Like I would love that with Draymond. He's a ball player, yeah. bro. Like he could do whatever he want, but he was born. Yeah. In third grade, he knew he was playing ball. I'm a hustler who converted into a rapper. You, I mean, you chose rap. Yeah, I chose rap. If you could have a choice, would you do something else? I would be an R&B singer. You, you want to be an R&B singer? Oh. If I could trade it right now. Let's hear something. My whole career of rap for an R&B, get on my knees, throw roses at the girls, and, yeah. and do wow. my... Do I it. love R&B music. It's really my first love. I can't see myself doing anything, because I love what I do. Agreed. Agreed. I agree with what right. you about to say. But yeah. if I could trade careers with someone, it would be Jamie Foxx. Really? Jamie Foxx is one of the most talented motherfuckers on the planet. Yeah, he's one of my he favorite people sing, in the world. He can act, he can dance. I he love can do him. Imp impressions, Stand impersonations. Yeah. So talented. He is uh, one of the most amazingly talented people I know. So it would be Jamie Foxx. And he's Foxx. hilarious. I think he's, uh, he's, he's so hilarious. hilarious. Oh my God. But I, I wanted to ask you a question. We talk about your voice because you get, I didn't realize, I got, Brown is big. I didn't realize like how many people hang on your every word and criticize everything mm -hmm. you say. Does it hurt more when it comes from your own people? I mean, that's a, that's a hell of a question. Um, I would say yes. Because that's my whole mission in life is to speak for my people. You yeah. know, everything that I do, every time I walk out of the, when I leave the room today, when I came here, I was thinking about my wife, my kids, my mom, and our people. Like, how can I make them proud on a day-to-day -day basis. Even when I make a mistake, like, and I do it with great intention and great will and great, and my heart is pure to my people. It definitely, uh, it definitely hurts, but I know it comes with the territory. Yep. You know, sticks and stones. You <laughs> but know? it hurts, so but it hurts. I, because I relate yeah, it to that. It hurts, because sure. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm on your side. I'm not, like, yeah. you have to, like, you have to be vulnerable. You have to put yourself yeah, out for there sure. in order to, right, to, so that you, to have an authentic voice. You yeah, can't sure. be fake. When you sit at that desk, when do you feel the most pressure or the most responsibility or like the weight of that crown? Um, usually I'm pretty easy with it because I have a thick skin. Not that it doesn't hurt, it hurts. Like, especially when your own people, I'm like, wait a minute, you guys, come on, right. chill out. <laughs> right. um, but I felt the weight during George Floyd and COVID. You were talking about the Hamptons, right? I was sitting in my pool house. I had a studio that they put in, in the pool house, the biggest night when they were like, fires in DC and LA was on fire and people were protesting and it was, you know, uproar. I was doing it for my pool house. And I felt the pressure, like the weight of the world on me. It was an out of body experience. I was like watching Don Lemon, watch Don Lemon do the wow. most. And because I, w I didn't have the big apparatus around me, right? If I'm sitting in that studio at CNN, like I know the mic's gonna work, the feed's gonna work. If I screw up the producers there, the, the, the camera guys, whatever, I'm sitting in my pool house. My dog could walk out and hit a cable and I'd be off the air. And I'm saying, we're gonna go to DC now. DC now, there's, you can see there's protests and there's fire, or whatever. Also on the other you side just, of the country, you LA. You just put a Don Lemon voice on yeah, just now. Yeah, it's LA and we can, we're gonna go to LA and there's LA is happening here. And also uh, in New York, this is happening. And, uh, there's, and it's just like, they're going into the stores here and whatever. And I, in Minneapolis, at this, and I'm sitting there going, I'm in my fucking pool house. What the <laughs> fuck is happening in the world? Yeah, I felt like I was standing mm -hmm. at the edge of the Atlantic yeah. Ocean, screaming into the ocean. Too. During the pandemic, I felt that too. You did. Like, I, I didn't want to comment too much on social media and shit because, you know, a lot of people going through what they're going through during the pandemic, losing their jobs, losing their, everything they've ever built, whatever the case right. may be. Yeah. And I'm fucking sitting in my crib in, in Brentwood. Yeah, and you know I, what yeah, I'm saying? I I'm, I'm like, what the shit, fuck? Though, too, you know what I'm saying? I wish I hadn't said, but I, I, well, you do it. And you say, okay, you know what? I didn't mean that. Because you're whatever. human. Because yeah. you're human. And that's why people my, can And I'm sitting there going, my, what do I say? The whole, I knew, though. I felt, I felt. You're done. The first time I felt, the whole world you. was watching. Right. We're, and we were watching, Don. Everybody was watching. We were watching. You was watching. In hip hop, I like to think um, I've been a leader of the Latinos for 20 something years. And so it really hurts me when I see a Latino under my comment and he be the one with the hate. Mm -hmm. Or if I walk in a place and I'm in a place and every black face is smiling, every white face is smiling and I see some Puerto Ricans in the corner looking with the hate. <laughs> I'd be like, damn, man. 
I've been fighting for you, man. Like, you serious, man? I feel like you're talking it really to me right hurts. Now. No, 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 no. You my guy. I mean, we're, the, we're in the Puerto Rican corner over here. Shout out to my Cubans, too, because I'm half Cuban, half Puerto Rican. They'll lynch me if I don't big them up, but it hurts. I saw Joe do an interview once, and they asked him, they asked him, you know, Joe, like, you're out the streets and you're a personality, you're a journalist and all that. You know, how do you deal with the haters? And I don't want to speak for you right here. And Joe was like, that's the problem. I'm still like, I can still get at people, you know. He's like, I don't like haters. If I see a hater, they might get danced on. It's still... Oh, they might. <laughs> you know, uh, they, what he was saying in, in CNN language is, uh, you know, people, uh, they like to take their shots. Right. But every now and then, Fat Joe will catch him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think this is the show for it, but... <laughs> You know, and, and... But you don't have to respond to everything. And the thing is, is that people want you to respond. They want the to... Gimmick. They want to come yeah. up, right? They want relevance from you. I'm, I'm weak. I'm, weak. <laughs> I'm, I'm impulsive. I'm weak. I mean, you know, it's, it's a problem. But you know what the thing is that I've realized? If you're going to say some shit... Yeah. Say it on the air. The disrespect yeah. was public. Yeah, the yeah, apology got to be public. Yeah, the apology can't be private, yes. Which Mav, I agree. Right. Um, do you want to apologize to me for blocking my number on your phone? Oh. oh. That's a real thing, Amy? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and with that, no. we're a wrap. I don't want to die for them to miss me. Yes, I see the thing. You know what's crazy is the one time I, I love to see middle-aged white men is in the cockpit of a plane. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie. They good, these guys. And they'll count the kids walking on the plane. I'm like, nah, God, you ain't letting this go. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't, like, down Western Road, hey, next. Might go down to G O D, yeah, wait. I made sure that Northside E, 